day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Today's podcast episode is proudly sponsored by Timo, the award-winning app designed to support neurodivergent people just like yourself with routine and scheduling. Head to your app store and type T-I-I-M-O to learn more. Good afternoon, loyal listeners. Welcome back to the 4080 podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, you know. Things are starting to look up. I am going to be starting my new job very, very soon. It's working for a non-profits and we're going to be looking at a lot of different areas of advocacy. So things are going well. Today, I am joined by a very, very lovely and interesting person. We're going to be talking to an autism researcher, but not just any autism researcher. Dr. Mordechai Benhamu is an autistic scientist and lecturer at the Israeli Center of Autism Research. With a PhD from the University of Paris, or Paris, 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 <laughs> and many, many years of experience in the field, he's written many articles and books, including his most recent publication, Autism, Falafel, and Rock and Roll. He's creator of the YouTube channel, The Autistic Guitarist, in which he creates tutoring videos on how to play, well, the guitar. To top all that off, he's made a lot of guest appearances on Israeli TV to talk about autism. From my previous correspondence with Mordi, (laughs) I can tell you that he's a very interesting, knowledgeable and lovely hearted guy. With all that massive introduction, how are you doing today, Mordi? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on at such uh, such short notice. You're very welcome. I've recently had quite a few cancellations, so it's it's very much appreciated. How are you doing? Like, uh, what have you been up to lately? Uh, You know, I'm uh, struggling with, uh, like many other uh, autistics, with uh, up and downs. Uh, burned out. I recently almost uh, burned out uh, because of my YouTube channel. You know, um, it's been really successful and uh, a lot of demands uh, from uh, guitar companies asking for me to make some reviews. And it's really cool, but um, I didn't really feel that it would, it, it, it would be so um, mm. overwhelming. But this time, it was, uh, you know, in my develop- development, it's a, a really a huge uh, uh, success. I identify really uh, early the signs of uh, the burnout. So I stopped and uh, I'm resting and thanks God doing well. That's brilliant. <laughs> I know you told me recently about that sort of burnout. I, I definitely struggle myself to... To understand or to, to notice when I'm, I'm sort of going downhill, I think, you know, as you said, some, sometimes with social media and sometimes with YouTube, there's a lot of communication that's involved. You know, you've got to talk to people, you've got to send emails, and it really does sort of, it taxes you quite a lot, doesn't it? When you've yeah. got to talk to those many different people. The main, the main issue with people is uh, that you have to, to speak with them or to communicate with them. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that you are doing well and you managed to catch yourself having a little bit of rest time. The way that we got in contact was, I think you, you or, or one of your PR people uh, sent me an email about your new book, Autism, Fluffle and Rock and Roll, which, very cool title. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's brilliant. Would you like to tell us about that? Like, how is how is it going? Uh, first of all, 
When you ask me for uh, my new book, uh, I thought you were talking about my real new book because I am uh, right now writing uh, uh, a new one, but <laughs> it's not uh, related to, <laughs> to autism. So I ask, why, why, I ask myself, why, why uh, Thomas does want to, to know about this new book? And so I understand oh, that you... Oh, okay, you, <laughs> sorry. A <laughs> little bit of a miscommunication <laughs> there. Yeah, you wanted to speak about uh, autism, falafel, and rock and roll. Uh, actually, um, what I can tell about the, this book is a uh, bestseller in Israel. So this wow. is the first, new, uh, first news. The second thing is uh, that he, he was published in September in uh, English and uh, is doing well, I think. I promised you to, to, send, you an, uh, <laughs> to send you one and I f totally forgot. So I will do it straight after the interview. That would be brilliant. <laughs> and yeah. add it to my little growing <laughs> stack of books on my desk. <laughs> so um, this book is uh, about autism, not about falafel and not about rock and roll. But uh, <laughs> if you read it, you will understand why I use uh, those words in the, in the title. Um, the book is mainly about uh, self-acceptance. It's my, uh, you know, my journey uh, from a uh, not not wanting to to hear about uh, to to hear about the uh, autism to uh, being uh, an autistic activist and a uh, writer uh, about the subject so what did mm -hmm. i did what uh, what happened it's also you know uh, an uh, invitation in my uh, inner uh, world what is mm -hmm. it's more for um, uh, neurotypicals but to identify with uh, with me uh, good to for uh, autistic too It's um, how do I, as an autistic, how am I functioning? How does mm -hmm. my brain uh, work? How, how do I cope with uh, feelings, with uh, my sensories, uh, uh, sensory issues and uh, stuff like that? Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing because, I mean, have you, have you received like emails and, and messages from people um, who have who've read your book and, and sort of learn more about autism yeah it's my uh, daily uh, life you know um one hour uh, a day i'm writing back to people that uh, was uh, were um, amazed by the book surprised and uh, that l learned um, about it uh, some are uh, uh, autistic uh, parents and uh, some are researcher and obviously uh, may, uh, many uh, autistics uh, from uh, the whole world. So it's, uh, it's fine. You know, when I wrote the book, I wrote it for myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to publish it and to be a famous or stuff like that. And so it's writ it is written with my, uh, in a really uh, special uh, way, really with no tact, no, uh, like an autistic could, could do it. And, uh, Anyway, I did an effort. My effort was to uh, uh, separate science from feelings or uh, from uh, my history. Because, you know, to cope with uh, feelings, I used to, to analyze everything through science. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I fell in love with science. Where is the science? Uh, some, someone is dead. Where is the science? How can I uh, uh, in, incorporate it? in my uh, uh, world uh, without being uh, hurt. And uh, science is uh, the, my solution. It's not the best, but it is mine. So I understood uh, writing this book that if I do it, you, um, you know, a melting pot between my feelings and my, uh, my experience and science, uh, the reader might, might go away. <laughs> so I, I make for each uh, chapter uh, telling about me, Mm -hmm. in a feeling uh, feelings way and uh, intimate way after that there, there is a chapter speaking about the same thing but from a scientific way ah i like that yeah so you can read the the whole book you know uh, chapter uh, chapter after chapter or you can if you uh, love gossip you can read only the feeling and the uh, uh, biographical uh, chapters or if you are mm -hmm. a nerd like me you can only read The, the scientific chapters. So that, there are three ways to, to, to read my book. It's really interesting that you mentioned about sort of understanding emotions and, and the world through that 
scientific lens because a lot a lot of the ways that I sort of developed my own social skills and my ability to sort of cope with I guess some of the the more negative sides of being autistic it's very certain it's very fact based it's very transferable it's very easy to understand as a system and so yeah it's 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 really interesting you're the first person who's had the same sort of experience as I have in that sense when i was in a, a, at the university i discovered erving goffman american uh, socio, uh, sociologist who is uh, speaking about researching uh, on um, uh, the, the dynamic between people uh, talking interacting and it mm -hmm. was for me like discovering like being uh, mo uh, you know moses discovering the bible <laughs> I really use it, I used it and still use it to cope, to succeed, to communicate. But the, the, the bad thing about, about it, you know, I was masking hmm. through this uh, competence. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't give my uh, autistic uh, personality uh, a place to, to be in this uh, scientific uh, way mm -hmm. of uh, communicating. I think that's that's sort of a great sort of lead into what the topic of the podcast was because obviously if you are going through life and you are viewing things in that very objective scientific lens a lot of the ways that you apply those things that you've learned is by sort of as you say putting on a mask and and displaying those characteristics to have a good social interaction but then again you know you are sort of taking apart a bit of who you who you are your natural way of being and communicating so sometimes doing all that work sort of helps you succeed in in a certain area of, of that interaction but you have to do a bit more work to sort of integrate your autistic self as well <laughs> being autistic um, it is not being uh, uh, um, someone that don't know how to communicate it's known from a research point of view that autistic are communicating pretty well uh, between them yes so the problem is communicating with autistic when you are not or uh, uh, communicating with neurotypicals when you are an, an autistic hmm. so to speak we could uh, compare it to speaking a foreign a foreign language mm -hmm. so we have to know how to sp to speak the neurotypical language Yeah. We have to teach them how to speak with that. Uh, with that. In the autistic language. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the, the main topic of, of the podcast, we had a chat about sort of how, how it is like to, to be openly autistic in Israel. And we're sort of comparing the differences between your experience in, in, in Israel and in France. From my own perspective, I would, I guess, assume that autism awareness and acceptance would be worse in Israel than it would be in perhaps the more Western countries. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Because, you know, what you said before was, was quite sort of impactful on me. Yeah, um, you know, naturally, I it's not naturally, it's culturally, Jew Jews are really curious. And uh, always try to make uh, uh, lemonade from lemon. <laughs> so uh, autism, you know, as, uh, as a fact, is of interest for, for Israelis. From a religious point of view, uh, people, uh, autistic people are perceived to be the closest human beings to God. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so religious people uh, don't see us as a... Uh, as, uh, retarded or as, uh, you know, uh, disa disabled, but as like, uh, you know, a, a really pure human being who can speak with, uh, with God. Mm -hmm. Israeli people are really, um, how to say it, they try to be uh, to, 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 from anything to do something. Mm -hmm. Consequence, the, the Israeli uh, army hiring autistic people in a special unit. <laughs> You know, in, in uh, intelligence uh, services, you know, autistics are good be because of their memory, because uh, of their um, 
a curiosity to to see some uh, uh, small details. Yeah, they are good observers for uh, for the Israeli army. So mm-hmm. there is such a unit. We had a lot of TV shows uh, in Israel. I was um, in mo- most of them speaking about being an autistic, and people were were so curious and and so tolerant, and they were really hungry about each piece of information uh, that could help them to to understand us. It's a really interesting fact. I mean, I've never heard of of anything along those lines. I mean, <laughs> I think it, the thing that astounds me most about the people in Israel wanting to learn about it and sort of use the talents of autistic people, sort of in, in the West, um, we already have this, I guess, this sort of stereotype around autism and, you know, the, they're not as forward thinking and they're not as active and, and I guess, productive or Uh, making lemonade out of lemons, not as much like that, very much stuck in their ways about things. So it's really interesting. What about the comparison sort of when you were living in France? Yeah, so in France, uh, there are two options when you are autistic. You are all uh, thought as a spoiled uh, child. So why Why don't you speak with me? You st- you're just shy or just... Uh, you know, a spoiled child. And the second option mm-hmm. for you uh, uh, as an autistic in France is to be uh, thought as a retarded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, they all th- uh, are thinking that you are a um, charlatan. Uh, how do you say it in English? Charlatan. I've heard of that word, but I don't actually know what it means. Uh, a person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill. Uh, yeah, yeah. Charlatan, yeah. absolutely. It's in, in, in French and in English uh, the same. In some reason, it's quite right about autistic because we are masking, but we are not charlatans because what they, they are thinking yeah. about. <laughs> we, are not, we are not faking being autistic. We are uh, masking, um, faking uh, um, being normal. So it's quite paradoxical. Mm. It is. And it's, it's crazy that, that people can have those assumptions considering the the breadth of, of research and knowledge into the, the the many skills that autistic people yeah. have P- French people have this uh, this uh, problem that th- they don't know English and as you know English is a scientific language mm. so uh, most of the people in France don't have access to all the researches to all the articles about autism so uh, France is really um, how to say it a really close country it's it's really par- paradoxical because you know it's it's a huge country a really rich country but um you know my my best friend is a professor in a, in France in the Sorbonne mm-hmm. you know where i learned yeah biggest university in France and his english is really really poor and when i am saying that you know you you are hear- hearing my english is not so wow me telling that the other's uh, English is uh, really poor um, shows you how the English is bad. So they don't have access to anything, mm-hmm. articles, research. And I think this is the, the reason why uh, their thought about uh, autism are so poor, I would say. But, mm-hmm. but you forgot one more culture. I am also Algerian. You know, Algeria is... A, you are, yes. Yeah. I am also... An, uh, I'm both uh, Jewish and uh, Arab. I, I love uh, challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Jewish, Arab, autistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will try to be gay also. <laughs> Add to the diversity there. <laughs> yeah. But, and uh, my uh, um, Muslim, Muslim uh, family in Algeria, when I told them that I'm uh, autistic told me, no, 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 don't be alone, don't be alone, <laughs> communicate. And they, they thought uh, that uh, I just d- didn't want to speak and I w- wanted, wanted to, to be uh, on myself and uh, not to communicate. Is that because of sort of the, the meaning of autism or auto sort of being alone? Yeah, and, and in uh, ancient uh, Greek, it's uh, being alone. And in Arabic, it's also being alone. So when I told it for, uh, mm. to my uncle Mohammed, uh, I am autistic. 
he told me, no, don't, don't be alone. You, you have ass. <laughs> So there's a little bit of a uh, lack of awareness in Algeria, then. <laughs> yeah. <I'd say>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a re- that's really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's always great to hear from personal experience of of different sub le- levels of acceptance and and I guess perceptions of autism across different cultures. Today we're going to be talking about self acceptance what that means for an autistic person, why it's important, but also how we can come to accept ourselves in our own lives. Mordi, when did you start your own personal journey of self-discovery and acceptance? Wow, okay. Uh, It was in France, and uh, I was uh, absolutely unhappy, but I had an explanation. Everyone is guilty. For me being unhappy. It was my uh, explanation. So uh, at some point I decided to, to come back to Israel and I thought uh, that being in my country would be a, a better thing for me. Mm-hmm. But in fact, in Israel, uh, I was also unhappy and went through a really uh, tough um, crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, um, I had two solutions. Once again, uh, accuse the whole world uh, for uh, my. Uh, and happiness, or uh, take responsibilities. And this time, Mm -hmm. I choose to take responsibilities. So I went to a psychologist, and I learned to love and accept myself. It was a really long journey. I thought to myself, okay, you are an autistic, you know. And from that moment, to say outside to other people, I am an autistic, and uh, I am pretty well with it. It was the, 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 the right thing to do, you know. Mm-hmm. First, telling people was uh, just thinking about uh, telling people I was terrified, but that was just a bad guess, you know. Uh, when I started started sharing, uh, people hugged and respect me. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I told uh, before, I, I really regret that I missed so so many years of uh, being uh, afraid. Uh, after that, uh, uh, explain to people what autism is and why I don't look autistic. Was my uh, jo- <laughs> is my journey? I used to ask that old chestnut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to ask people if they know uh, what people with uh, hemorrhoids look like. Obviously, they they don't know. As I tell, then I, I tell them that uh, as a neuro- neuro- neurological uh, specificity, you can really see what autism is from outside. You can see mm-hmm. uh, here or there uh, shyness, steaming, or but you can't really know if it's uh, autism or not. So there is nothing like this look like an autistic. So it, mm-hmm. it, this is, uh, I, I must say, uh, a long journey too. But, uh, you know, I, I do it for, uh, through my book and through my um, uh, lectures. Mm-hmm. What did you use to, to help, help yourself along, along that journey? Were there any specific resources that you drawed upon was there any people that you you listened to or or that were big icons for you uh, yeah uh, in in this uh, journey of um, self acceptance to uh, self acceptance i had a, a psychologist named efrat her, na- her name efrat she has a, she has a, a chapter in my book this re- uh, re- relation with uh, with a, a good psychologist just saved my life. You know, uh, she was imperfect and, f- mm-hmm. and felt absolutely right with it. And for me, it was amazing. How she dared to say me what are her weakness mm-hmm. and still she, she, she felt really confident. It was for me incredible. And she learned me to, she, she learned me to, to do it to accept that I am imperfect and that it's okay. But she didn't tell me that uh, being autistic is uh, imperfection. It was not the issue. You as a wall uh, have a good thing and bad thing in th- inside of you. And this is good because every one of us, each of us is like that. And uh, we have to, to control the bad and to, uh, to get help with uh, our good uh, sides. And um, this is being, uh, being human, 
you know i was really mm-hmm. tough uh, with myself and she uh, she she taught me to to be a more uh, you know uh, more uh, sweet with my with myself <laughs> more nice more nice and understanding of yourself <laughs> yeah i like that i uh I, i identify with quite quite a lot of what you're saying especially when i was a bit younger i had this idea of perfection in my head you know like uh the perfect person does not swear the perfect person does not drink alcohol or go partying or or anything they they always work and they they read and they They do all of this all of these things, and I do all of these things, so I must be the the perfect person it i mean it was it was sort of a mindset that I had, but i I wasn't really accepting of that as as sort of a little bit of a delusion <laughs> yeah it's really it's really funny what you what you're saying because uh until now I don't smoke i uh don't drink. Uh, I never done uh, drugs and because mm-hmm. because uh, of, of this uh, thought that that I have to be perfect that a perfect person don't do uh, such things and um, you know obviously uh, it's it's not right I'm really happy that I don't smoke and do, don't do drugs but yeah in in, in many uh, sides of my life you know i i avoided to to make something because i i thought it it will uh, avoid me to be a perfect person so you know mm-hmm. you're mistaken uh, you are uh, unhappy all the time because there is no such a thing being perfect mm-hmm. i'm imperfect as a, and i'm really happy to to be like that i guess it's i i i see what you you're saying about that is It's like every every decision that you make in life is built upon what this perfect person would do in your head rather than what you want to do and what you think that would be something that you you want to explore or something i mean i mean we are t- i mean we did just give the examples of alcohol and drugs and uh cigarettes and such, but it's more of more of an extreme example of Absolutely. of just how that sort of perfectionist mindset can sort of Get in the way of things, I think that the main reason why I tried to get out of that was because, as I was getting older, people w- were becoming more aware more aware of false perfection, <laughs> I guess, and so it, it really hampered my my ability to socialize with people. I would have a very narrow sort of set of requirements for for people that I would be friends with. And if they broke any of those, then I would sort of cut myself off from them. But as, as you get older and as you enter into adulthood, people have that, that, that mentality of sort of finding themselves and who they are. And anyone who puts those limitations on the people around them, they don't really want to be around those people. <laughs> they want to, to be around accepting people who will, who will listen and who will appreciate for them despite what they may have done that you you don't like that was sort of a, a turning point for me in my journey i was very lonely very isolated you know i had to sort of do something to improve my life in in that sense i i really do feel a lot about what you're saying it resonates quite a bit you know it was a it, it's it's really funny as you know i'm also a professional uh, guitar guitar player and you know Wrestling with uh, other musicians, it's not uh, only about music, you know? People mm. are so- socializing, are uh, uh, smoking some weed, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> beers. And, and for me, it was absolutely, I couldn't understand it. So uh, mm-hmm. in the time they were, you know, uh, in, the, in a, another room smoking and drinking, I was in the rehearsal room and playing and practicing and mm. not so- socializing. Because yeah. in my autistic mind, if there is a rehearsal, we have to play. So uh, there is not mm-hmm. uh, such a thing, a thing um, smoking and drinking. And, you know, <laughs> looking, uh, looking um, at this, uh, me getting older and more uh, competent. Uh, co- com- looking at it in reflection. Yeah, yeah. Be- being more competent, uh, communicating and understanding uh, neurotypicals. I, I I try to think how they they, they what they thought about me, you know, 
Yeah, I was mm -hmm. alone in the rehearsal re room and <laughs> playing while they they were doing uh, fun. It, it, uh, how weird I am, and I were. It's I was. It's uh, incredible. But you know, it's who I am. And uh, anyway, they they continue to hire me. So I think uh, it was not too bad to work with me. <laughs> that's this. That's really interesting. Again, like I, I used to sort of do quite a bit of taekwondo. Don't know if you know taekwondo. Yeah, abs like yeah absolutely. A... It's Korean uh, uh, art martial, martial yes. art. Yeah, yeah. We're I'm mostly sure. with the uh, with the legs. Mm -hmm. Lots of flash kicks. Lots yeah, yeah. of falling over. <laughs> usually, <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, there, there's a lot of the times where I would go to training camps, or a lot of times during classes where we would have some downtime. You know, we'd train and then we'd we'd rest and we'd talk and socialize <laughs> when you were saying about sort of being on your own and practicing with your guitar it's so boring like it was the same yeah, the same yeah, with yeah. me i was just do if we do this thing called leg control where like we lift our leg up and we try to hold it out at different kicks to try and improve like a, a hip strength and stuff and that was like the only thing that i did during the breaks just waiting for training to to happen again <laughs> Not talking to anybody. <laughs> um, people try to talk to me, but I'd just be like listening, but not really, not really contributing in that sense. You know, from a, an a evolutionary uh, point of view, gossip is uh, really interesting because it helps uh, the human to, to get updated with uh, the, the life of the tribe. And autistic are not wi uh, wired to do these uh, things, you know? So gossip for um, uh, autistics is the most boring thing you can do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I find gossip very, like, you know, the small talk very annoying. Yeah. But I do very much enjoy talking about a certain subject. So, like, I think, you know, as I've got older, I've, I've found the utility in socializing and, and talking about topics in, in detail. Whereas used, I used to just see all social interaction as just boring and unneeded. As I've got older, I've sort of started to appreciate the fact that, you know, maybe other people can, can teach me things that I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I really love to learn uh, about my topics, scientific uh, topics, you know, uh, uh, research about uh, the brain, you know, and, uh, neuroscience, mm. music. Uh, out of uh, those uh, topics, you um, barely can speak with me. And uh, the other thing I uh, like in uh, so socializing, it's during my lectures. And if you, are, mm. if you think about it, it's not really socializing because I'm lecturing, speaking, and everyone, is, uh, everyone shut his mouth and listen <laughs> and for me it's ideal you know <laughs> it's it's a really you good... can monologue for days yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah freely <laughs> yeah yeah I can, I can imagine what's just as a as a sort of side point what do you usually talk about during your lectures so i take a uh, daily life topics and explain them through uh, science in a funny and a uh, uh, cool way. So I'm speaking about ne neuroscience, about uh, hormones uh, in a relationship, about communication from an autistic point of view and sci scientific point of view, speaking about autism, you know, and uh, why uh, it is so cool to be autistic <laughs> and uh, why we are the, the next uh, thing in the evolution. <laughs> decision making i really like this uh, this topic so uh, mm -hmm. obviously from a scientific point of view the the human behavior is really interesting to me so i i i speak about it you know about uh, cheating uh, thing and thing like this but always from my mm -hmm. autistic and sci scientific point of view and the uh, people uh, seems uh, seem to to like it because you know they continue to invite me so <laughs> I think that's 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 really interesting. I I also find the uh, decision making, you know, sort of the the emotional and intellectual components and in, into making decisions and I, I, stuff. And I am really really lucky because uh, two of the greatest researchers uh, in this topic are Dan Ariely and uh, Daniel Kahneman. 
דניאל קנמן is a Nobel Prize, and uh, they are both, both of them are uh, Israelis. And uh, mm. yeah, and Dan Ariely, I don't know if you know him, but you should, is a, I can call him a friend, he's a really, really nice person. And uh, it's a really a privilege to, to know him. You should definitely think about recording the lectures. Ah, <laughs> really? And, uh, putting them up. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, I mean, for example, the thing with uh, Jordan Peterson, he, he's a clinical psychologist. He got famous on YouTube for putting out his, his lectures. I think people will be really interested to hear that. To hear about that yeah but there, there is a uh, one problem with uh, you know uh, uploading my, my lectures if I upload my lectures they will get it <laughs> <laughs> they will they will get it on YouTube <laughs> oh of course yeah yeah you know yeah so I don't want to shoot my uh, to shoot myself so I <laughs> shoot yourself in the foot <laughs> yeah. so I don't do this but I have so, some small lectures or some uh, you know um, part of my lectures uh, here and there, but uh, no, no more than that. So it's time for a quick mention from our sponsors, Timo. If you love visual support in your scheduling, Timo is for you. The app was designed for people with ADHD and autism and helps empower users to schedule visual routines that work. Users say that Timo can help reduce stress and support executive function, which are both two things that I struggle with myself. Learn more at www.timoapp.com or just type in T-I-I-M-O into your search bar. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Your support means the world. Anyway, let's get back into the show. Let's go on to the next question. What challenges have you faced in your path for self-acceptance and how did you overcome them? I know we've talked a little bit about this, but yeah, any sort of big barriers? My, uh, my main challenge uh, was uh, to convince myself that um, I am who I am and uh, I, 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 want, I really wanted to be some, uh, someone else. But you know, you are you, who you are and you stay uh, true to that. So don't try to be someone else. Just be yourself. However imperfect you are, that's enough. Uh, I would say daring the difference was my uh, uh, main uh, challenge. People are re- way more in, uh, tolerant with our explanation uh, than, we, uh, than we think. You, we can't expect from people to know uh, who we are without uh, el- helping them to, to figure out with us. So mm-hmm. my main challenge was uh, to destroy my, my own barriers, you know, my own uh, thought about what people think about me or what uh, should a human being uh, be. It was my, my main challenge. And uh, not being me all these years, uh, masking... Um, lying you know to myself and to the others uh, it was uh, so sad you know uh, looking at this it was so sad and from the very moment i thought to myself you are an autistic uh, it's who you are and uh, and i try i started to to share you know my my chance in in hebrew chance is mazal you know uh, from uh, being a, a, a guy who uh, <laughs> goes goes from work to work you know from job to job i i had 29 jobs in 14 years wow yeah my psychologist uh, told me that i'm really stable being instable and from the very moment uh, you know uh, with uh, my partners it was the same thing you know i, I didn't have mm-hmm. a really good relationship and yeah. no, no friends and uh, from the very moment i, I start to know who i am professionally from a relationship point of view, uh, everything get really easier. What is good to me, I knew what is bad mm-hmm. to me, and it helped me, you know, to to get better decision about my life and uh, about uh, who I, I should work with or, or be with. You know, I think that that's a really good thing to to highlight. Sort of working from the inside out. 
you know, you work on sort of mindset of, of what it means to be autistic and what it means to be yourself. And then the outside, you know, it's, it, there's no use displaying that you're happy about autism just because everybody else is saying that you should be. You've got to, to really feel that that is something that is good. And I think with that, in order to do that, there, there comes a, a large period of time where you really listen to other autistic people. Uh, you learn about the science, you learn about the public perceptions, you learn about what it, what it means to be autistic from other people and sort of apply that to your own life and your own mindset. I think that's always a really good path to go down. You don't want to be just putting it on the outside because I guess it is, if, if you're just displaying that you're happy with it, it's sort of like a, a mask in itself. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't strike hard at your core and it doesn't affect your emotions and your relationship with life in any way. I think one of the top things that I've found with sort of accepting my autistic self is that for a lot of the time during my life and, and sometimes nowadays even, I'm comparing myself to people who aren't autistic, you know. I have standards in my head that I'm trying to reach, whether it be in the social realm or in work or daily life and, and exercise and, and stuff like that. I'm always comparing myself to, the, to this person who may find these areas of life easier. What, what do you feel about that? Do you think that uh, you know, that holds any truth to you? Uh, as a guitar player, most of my uh, life, I try to be my heroes. I wanted to be Van Halen. I wanted to be Steve Lukather. I wanted to be them. I, at a certain point, I thought to myself, even if, if I succeed to be them, it will be a, an hero because there is already one Eddie Van Halen and one uh, Steve Lukather, and they always will be better than me being them uh, themselves. So uh, I, I started to search my own voice and to do my stuff. And so I, I adapted my uh, playing to who I am. And so I developed mm -hmm. my personality uh, as a guitar player. It's fantastic <laughs> because I, I am the best in the world being myself as a guitar player. And you know, you can take it. It was uh, the, the same thing as a researcher, you know? I wanted to be Dana Yelly. I wanted to be my uh, this... Pro, uh, Look, my uh, friend, uh, this professor, and you know, uh, this um, uh, center in Israel that uh, hired me, hired me because I'm so special as a, an autistic. You know, I see topics, uh, subjects, researches, questions in so a uh, special way, and science needs it. So it's a gift to be an autistic. It's a gift being who you are because... No matter if you're autistic or not, who you are, it's you. Uh, there is a, just one like this. So be really busy to, to be yourself, to improve who you are and your skills. And with it, you will find your place in the world. But if you, if you fake it, if you are masking, you will be a pale copy of someone else. And this someone else will be always better than you being himself. Definitely. I think there's a lot of truth in, in what you're saying. There is this, this concept called adaptive, that adaptive construction or something. Just, yeah. You know, look, looking at different people and, and taking on their characteristics or watching films and taking on mannerisms and behaviors and constructive ad adaptation, that's it. <laughs> Got it the opposite way around. But I think that that's just another sort of pointer. I think if, if you are trying to develop yourself, it should be more about watching things and, and listening to people and seeing which bits feel right to you. Yeah, absolutely. Not what looks good yeah, you, or sounds good. Or, you can imitate, you, you know, our brain. We know uh, from, uh, you know, the, the building of the brain teach us that we are made aimed to, to imitate. So it's uh, mm -hmm. natural. You can imitate, but, you know, as uh, Oedipus, you have to kill your father, you know? 
you, okay, you you took you took from him. It's nice you develop yourself, but from now be yourself and kill him. Sort of a sort of a. Um, I don't think I actually mean just kill your father. I mean like as a. Uh, <laughs> what's the word? Um, an analogy that describes how you should sort of view it. It is always good to learn from people and to take on board what fits right into into your life. It just if if you feel like there's any sense of force to that, then it's it's usually not a good a good path to go down. I definitely did. Like when I was trying to get better at like dating and relationships, I watched people who were really good at it, good at it. And so I tried to imitate the the way that they behave around girls, you know. Sort of just being a bit more standoffish, uh, not as emotional, not as talkative, <laughs> you know, all those kind of stuff. But it's just not me. I wrote three uh, chapters about it in my in my book, the the autistic point of view about dating, happiness, and a rel- relationship. Mm-hmm. For this too, you have to be yourself because if you are masking while while you are dating. So the girl will uh, maybe f- uh, fall in love for uh, another person than you. Mm. And after a while, y- you and uh, her, you will have to cope with uh, the, the gap that uh, will be there between you, bequ- between the mask and uh, both, both of you. And uh, for a job, it's uh, the same thing. You, you have to be yourself in any situation. So the person that hiring re- you or dating you knows mm-hmm. what you see is what you get and my wife uh, you know i i wasn't uh, masking and uh, she <laughs> she's eating the shit she's so in the date <laughs> <laughs> you you're full of analogies i like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so we talked a little bit about the challenges let's get into the, the juicy bit What benefits have you you seen in your own life from incorporating that that sense of of, of self acceptance and I guess honesty with the world? First of all, <laughs> honesty with myself, you know, because I was totally lying or hiding. I, I didn't want the truth, you know. Uh, it was uh, the same thing with me being an Arab. You know, I discovered when I was ten that my uh, gr- grandfather. Is a uh, Arab Muslim, <laughs> you know. I'm Jewish, Israeli. <laughs> What the shit, you know? <laughs> <Dude. laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, I didn't want it in my life. You know, I I struggled to know who I am. I am an Algerian, a Jewish, a French, and uh, an Israeli, an autistic. Who I am? Also, being an Arab, it, it was too much for me. So I didn't want to speak about it. I never talk about my grandfather. I never never talk about uh, me being an autistic until I understood that I was unhappy, and I was unhappy not because of the people or the situation, but because of me not presenting myself the right way and the uh, and honestly. You know, each time I had a successful uh, relation or experience, I thought what. Would have been this experience if I have told the truth, who I am, mm. and I thought that it, uh, if I would, people or the experience uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't have been good to me. So it was, you know, always um, a bitter, you know, a bitter test in my uh, on my uh, bitter sweet, bitter sweet. You know, I couldn't enjoy anything because of this of this. So <laughs> I remember one uh, once. Uh, I, I sat with a, a friend, my best friend, and I told him, "You know, Tomer, my grandfather is a, is an Arab. <laughs> he, 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 he just didn't care." And I, you know, it was so the difference bet- between what I thought he would uh, think about me and what he really th- uh, thought was huge. So much that I, I understood that I was uh, I was wrong all my life. So you know, with uh, me telling him that uh, I am uh, an Arab, I I I, I gone uh, you know forward with uh, me being an autistic and telling to people and and uh, 
maybe one, two people told me, ah, you, you have this, uh, those opinions because you are an Arab, you know, <laughs> Be, but, or, uh, yeah, we can't speak with you because you are an autistic or, you know, twice or maybe in my uh, life I, I've heard uh, a non really uh, cool things. But most of the time, people really like me for who I am. They really don't care if I am a Portuguese, British, a Arab, or a autistic, or I don't know what. You know, I am moldy, and they are, this is uh, the real deal. They, that's what they want or don't want, you know. But if people want me or don't want me, they have to get me or not to get me for the good reasons. And I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. For anybody out there who doesn't sort of accept the autism or doesn't or hasn't put the time in to, to understand what autism means for them, honestly, there is nothing quite like it. You know, you can see things on, on Instagram of people being themselves, being their autistic selves, but it, it doesn't mean that you have to, you have to copy them because that's what autism is. Autism is, is just It's looking, looking at your life, looking at the things that you struggle with, the things that you're good at, the way that you communicate, your demeanor, your behavior. And I guess refining that, because, you know, in life, you sort of have to, you have to, to grow in some way. You have to develop. But there are always ways that you can make that your unique life. It sounds like I'm just talking a bunch of mumbo jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I would be nothing if I didn't take on the fact that I am highly empathic. I don't do well at being nasty or, or confronting people. And I thought that sometimes that's what I had to do. But now that I know who I am, I know my morals, I know my values. You know, if I have a confrontation, you know, my all, my first port of call to go to in, in those situations would be to try and reason, to try and develop some form of connection there, you know, tamper down the flames. <laughs> and that, that can be applied to different, different scenarios, like just making my room how I would like it with all the toys and with all the colorful lights that I want to have in my room, dressing how I like. Some people don't like how I dress, and uh, but it's something that I like and I like to present myself as. There's so many different ways that you can do it. And you know the, the, there is a, an intense fulfillment in knowing who you are for anybody. I just think that it's, it's very important for autistic people to, to have that. <laughs> I am rambling my head off. <laughs> Shall we go into the next, <laughs> the next bit of the question? Um, <laughs> so the, the last, the last bit that I wanted to, to really talk about was, you know, what, what, what advice would you give to someone wanting to, to start accepting themselves? I guess steps that they can take to, to get to that place. Be honest, be honest with yourself. First of all, things could, would, should be, uh, easier if you, um, call yourself the right name. If you know uh, where to, to get help and uh, where to search for friends and uh, which kind of a job you can get, knowing uh, what is uh, convenient to your specificities, this is, uh, this is my tip. I like that. Do you think that there's any sort of things that, that people should go forward and, and learn and, or look into before, before they, they can ex accept themselves? Because I think... For people who aren't in the autistic social media communities and um, who aren't really up to date with sort of the social progressions, do you think there's any any sort of resource that they can they can use to to get into that and to learn more about it? You know, uh, I'm talking to you, and I figure out that uh, I didn't speak about the the main tip for self acceptance: buy autism falafel and rock and roll. <laughs> 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 I am so bad I am so bad promoting <laughs> at promoting <laughs> <laughs> of course definitely go go in and get the book very much looking forward to reading it yeah you'll get it soon you'll get it soon <laughs>
I think the last thing that I would I would say is there are many courses out on the internet for personal development and, and personal growth that aren't just limited to autistic people. You know, it's it's very important, as we said during this podcast, to work from from that the inside out. Find out what your values are, what you value in, in other people, what you value in yourself, what you don't like about yourself, and what you don't like about your life, and what you like about your life. Having having an idea of where you're coming from, it makes it more likely that you'll get to the place that you're trying to go to. The more information, the better at the start. Then you can start to work on yourself and work on changing your life in a way that maybe might not be perceived as better by the rest of society, but maybe more true to yourself and honest with yourself. This is always a very fun part of the podcast. Would you like to give three main things that you want people to take away from the podcast? Yeah. First thing, be honest with yourself, first of all. The second thing, you are not perfect, and this is perfect. The third thing, yeah, life is absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's a really cool thing that we are a part of it. So let's uh, take our part of the cake and uh, let's enjoy it till the end. Thank you very much for those. Very good ones. Very short and concise. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we usually get, we get quite um, large answers to these. And we have the very last question. What does autism mean to you, Maudie? You know, there are fat people, skinny people, tall people, small people, and we are fine with it most of the time. As our um, body is uh, diverse, is uh, different from uh, one to one, our brain is also different, and we have to embrace this neurodiversity. And being autistic is being different, but, you know, we are not the, the only one to be different. There are the, uh, different ways to be, to be different. So being autistic is, is a feeling, experiencing the world in a, a different way. But, you know, it's, it's a chance. It's a chance for the humanity to have people that can see things that others can't. So if you can't get it from, from them... You will make the humanity way richer than it is right now, you know? It's fantastic. It reminds me of the, this movie, uh, The Sixth Sense, with uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, I see things that people don't see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that, by the way. <laughs> very, very insightful. I, I can sort of see the roots of autism's meaning to you from your experiences and through your science work and stuff it's it's very it's really interesting to sort of hear people's answers to that that open question because it you know may, maybe if i was to compile everybody's answers to it and sort of listed off personality traits and you know like trait openness and like <laughs> industriousness and stuff maybe there would be like a correlation who knows <laughs> yeah <laughs> that could be a new study Okay, so thank you everybody for listening to this. It's a subject that I've been wanting to cover for a while. I have perhaps noticed in reflection that I should have possibly been a bit more broader with the questions. I have to do a bit of editing to, to chop down what I'm saying quite a bit. <laughs> but thank you so much, Marty, for coming on and, and sharing your knowledge and experience. Would you like to give out any links? Yeah, I will uh, send you the link to my uh, to my book and to my uh, YouTube channel for the mm -hmm. musician uh, among us. Yes, so it would be autism, falafel, and rock and roll. And of course, I will put the link down in the description to both your book and your YouTube channel, The Autistic Guitarist. For anybody who is a yeah. budding musician and wants to... To, let, to learn from another autistic musician. And my next uh, video is um, a cover from uh, More Than Words, the extreme uh, song with a beautiful si uh, female singer uh, that is uh, autistic oh. too. 
yeah, yeah. I, I, w- I will send it, send it to you. Uh, Brilliant. So. so if you want to catch the 40 Audi podcast anywhere else, it's always available on Apple and Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify and YouTube. I am currently putting in a little bit more work into my YouTube channel, Asperger's Growth. So if you want to check out some of my newest videos, uh, one particular video that may be of interest is Should You Be Stimming in Public? Where I dissect and analyze some of the social implications of stimming and uh, some of the benefits of it. Of course, if you want to stay up to date with things, social medias are always the place to go. At Asperger's Growth, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I do have a new website that has recently been created. It's called thomashenley.co.uk. It's a very nice short tagline. So if you if you go over to there, let me know how it is. You may have also noticed that I am using my new microphone. And you would be right, because I was recently supposed to be putting out a podcast with Professor Baron Cohen, but it's been pushed back to about mid-April now. So I'm having to do some episodes to fill in the gaps until the end of season one. I'm currently looking for ways that I can improve the podcast for the next season. I'm thinking of hiring an animator to make the YouTube videos more engaging. And I'm also going to be doing a bit of workarounds with the intro. So there's a lot of good things that are coming in the future. And I just want to say thank you everybody for supporting me all this time. Your support really does mean the world. Okay, Morty. <laughs> After I have been trying to piece my words together for about five minutes. Um, <laughs> how did you find the podcast? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, really. You know, I, I'm quite used to to it. Uh, you know, interviews and, and uh, stuff like this, but it was more uh, like a, a conversation with a uh, a guy who. Uh, was uh, on the same wave as I am, so it was really pretty, pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I, I very much enjoyed talking to you as well. I, I, re- I really do hope that we we keep in contact over the, yeah, the coming really years and, and such. It's it's been a pleasure to speak to you. To everyone out there who is currently in the midst of this whole COVID isolation situation, my heart goes out to you. But do not worry. Do not fret. The finish line is in sight, and we're going to get through this as a family, as a unit, as a community, as a country. And to anybody else who is out of lockdown, good for you. (laughs) I envy you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episodes, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks' time for another. See you later, folks. I think my radiator came on midway between this because I've like my face is getting so red. Like <laughs> it was cold before, but now it's absolutely boiling. You should be here. You will. You will know what is what boiling is. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it's. You know, I, it's quite significantly warm. Yeah, I'm living in the <laughs> middle of the of the Judean desert, so you know we know what warm is. <laughs> Of course you do. <laughs> um, right. Oh, I forgot to press stop.